Hello everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. This is fifth lecture and so far we have understood about basic concepts of CMOS in previous video. Now we will continue with some fundamental basic concepts of STA. In this video we will learn about SLU, what is meant by the SLU of waveform. We will go on to learn about SKU also with examples. Let us first understand the meaning of SLU. By definition, SLU refers to the rate of change of voltage with respect to time. Let us consider this example here. This is a square waveform and let's say this is your 0 volt and this is 5 volt and this is time axis. So here the time taken by this waveform to reach from 0 to 5 with respect to this time is the definition of SLU. Typically if let's say SLU is S it will be change of voltage. So let's say that is dV with respect to time. So mathematically we can represent the SLU as dV by dt where V is voltage that is this voltage and the time with respect to time. Since this is ideal voltage so in the very short span of time we can see that it has gone from 0 to 5 volt. Hence SLU is nearly infinity in the case of ideal voltage because within very short span of time that is tending to 0 it has gone from 0 to 5. So the, because of this small value the SLU will be near to infinity in the case of ideal voltage. But in reality the waveform will not be like this rather it will be like this where there will be a change in the voltage with respect to time and SLU will not be infinity. The SLU is measured in terms of transition time that is the time it takes for signal to transition between two specific levels. Note that the transition time is actually the inverse of SLU rate that is the larger the transition time is the slower the SLU rate is and vice versa. The waveform at the ends that is this end and this end are actually asymptotic and it is harder to determine the exact start and end point of the transition. Consequently, the transition time is actually defined with respect to the specific threshold levels like this. These thresholds are specified as a percentage of VDD value. So let's say this is a rising edge. So it will be initially let's say 30% or 0.3 and 70% or 0.7 of VDD. Similarly, we can mark the threshold at the falling edge which means 70% of this value of VDD here and 30% of the value at the falling edge like this. Now the slew at the rising edge will be the difference between these two values with respect to time and slew at the falling edge will be difference in these two values with respect to time. This will be called as rise slew and this will be called as fall slew. To specify these threshold points at the rising and falling edges, the tool understands the commands. So the set of commands are like these. For example, falling edge thresholds can be specified like this. Slew underscore lower underscore threshold percentage fall. So 30 will be first value at the fall and slew upper threshold percentage will be 70%. Like this we can specify. Also we can specify for rising edge also in the similar manner. These commands come in very handy at the time when somebody would be creating the libraries or the timing models for the specified cells. Now let's quickly move on to understand the topic skew. Let us take one example here. So there is one flip flop one FF1 and another flip flop FF2 which both are triggered by same clock source and the data is traveling from this Q pin of flip flop one to D pin of flip flop two via some combinational logic. Let's say the clock source of these two flip flop is sitting somewhere here. So this is your clock source which is let's say some PLL and we can clearly see that there is some delay that clock will take from this source point to reach to the point of this clock and to reach to the point of this flip flop 2. Hence the time taken by the clock to reach from source S to the destination D is the latency of that clock for that particular flop. Let's say it is reaching here in time T1 and the same clock is reaching to the destination D2 in the time T2. So the clock source latency for the flip flop 1 is T1 and the clock source latency for the flip flop 2 is T2. Hence clock Q can be defined as the clock source latency is between the different flip flops. So here the clock source latency of flip flop 2 is T2 
and clock source latency of flip flop 1 is t1 so the difference between them is t2 minus t1 that would be the clock skew of this case however in real world the designs are synchronous which means that we want all the flip flops to get to be triggered simultaneously and hence to achieve that designers try to minimize the clock skew as much as possible because of this placement of clock source and flip flops becomes very important and challenging let us take one more example to understand this earlier there were two flip flops now let's say there are four flip flops and they all are connected via common clock source like this so this is your clock source here and what we are trying to achieve here is we are trying to minimize the latency and skew so we can clearly see that this flip flop one above and the one below they both are triggered from this clock source almost simultaneously since the distance of the wire from the clock source is almost same and the flip flop two will also take almost same time as the flip flop two the one which is below here this is how we can achieve the minimum minimization of skew however there are much more better techniques to achieve further more minimum skew which we shall be seeing later on in the further videos one more important concept we would like to highlight here before we finish off this topic that signal clock signal which is traveling from this clock source and it is reaching flip flop one above and the one below it is taking almost same time but it is taking lesser time compared to this flip flop two above and this flip flop two below hence there is a good chance that signal quality might degrade based on the transition time from this clock source when it is traveling to this flop flop here and this flip flop here so to avoid that degradation due to transition we would like to implement or insert one buffer here and one buffer here the purpose of inserting the buffer is to maintain the signal quality and avoid any kind of degradation in transition of the clock signal this we will also explain in further videos that why it is important to insert the buffer and how can we prevent the signal degradation but for now we would like just to mention that if you want to prevent the de degradation of transition just insert a buffer if it is a long net that's all for today please like share and subscribe to the channel and if you have any doubts please ask them in comment section thank you